And, I mean, you may want to ask more about this. I'll just say two things. One is, it took a long time to equalize that balance, you know, between me as a, a more established figure on the left in his early 30s and an 18-year-old trying to learn how to become a historian and active in it, you know. It took a long time. It was a big imbalance. And I'm afraid in my characteristically masculinist way, you know, I thought this was right. Uh, we have love letters in which I, you know, entirely D.H. Lawrence language in which, you know, sees planets circling around the moon. <laughs> Ridiculous nonsense. But, you know, when you look back at them, it, they weren't at all anti-feminist or anything. It was just assumed that the man led and was experienced and knew things and talked well and did theory and <laughs> etc. So that's writing that ballad took a long time. It was not easy. And it's quite a while before our interests began to converge. Mm -hmm. And then really we were able to learn from one another. Though she said she always learned from me. But I didn't think in that area I had much to learn. I learned that. And then I learned from her. Mm -hmm. So it's been a change of, you know, shift in the in the uh, balance of relationship all the time. And the second thing is, of course, feminism. Because mm -hmm. uh, what happened was that she finished her degree, got a very good degree, decided to stay on to do her PhD in medieval history with Rodney Hilton, started it, got pregnant. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, now she's locked up at home with a young baby, uh, you know, starting a medieval history PhD. <laughs> Uh, you know, and I'm teaching my life out at the centre. Mm. So, she was ready made for first wave feminism. You know, and lots of other people like her, those mum, mothers with academic or husbands or people who worked mm. elsewhere, who are locked up for the first time at home with children, mm. got together. And so Birmingham started a, you know, a crash and a school and a, you know, joint the parents looking after other children and mm -hmm. the whole neighborhood became a kind of feminist network. So it took root in that. And uh, so the second thing is that this is a very difficult period for us mm -hmm. because that rubbish about moons and planets mm -hmm. just had to, <laughs> it had to go. <laughs> and what I discovered from it is that you change your ideas but your practice mm -hmm. is much more stubborn. So of course I was in favour of women's equality. Of course, obvious, so obvious, you know. And men boss them about and tell them what to do, as I have done with Catherine. So that has to stop. But what was an alternative way of relating to one another? And how men became... I didn't believe many could become feminists. I don't think... I'd still, I still don't believe that. I think maybe they become sympathetic to it and understand it from the inside and try to change their own <laughs> bloody practice. But, you know, so in any case, you know, you, you, you will almost certainly remember, you know, the beginnings, the early stages of second wave feminism. They didn't want to hear from me. <laughs> Shut up, you know, we're going. <laughs> we're going somewhere else. <laughs> Have our conversations into our own voices for a change. So that has been another big transformative moment for us. Mm -hmm. Took quite a long time and uh, and by the end our relationship was very different mm -hmm. from that independent, independent thing that I started out. Different in what way? In every way, Paul. Uh, um, it's hard to pinpoint. I mean, I just assumed our inequality. Mm -hmm. And after that I couldn't assume it. I had to assume our equality. Mm. I therefore had to tolerate, you know, if she'd have friends I didn't particularly like, okay. Mm. We had to decide whether, you know, um, uh, what sort of marriage it was, an open marriage, whatever that is, or, you know, we we're going to try to remain monogamous mm. in the, you know, in the way. And what did that tell you about, about <laughs> male, men and women and about marriage as a, you know, as a kind of contract and, a binding contract on women, and then you know, then there's a the sexual politics. So it's a period of huge turbulence, and because Catherine was involved in all of that, very actively involved, 
it was a matter of in the home as well as, mm. you know, how do you bring up the children? Mm. Do you give the boys guns? Well, I'd always had guns, you know. I grew up with holsters and air rifles <laughs> at home. Yeah, but what does that mean? Why don't they have dolls? Dolls? You know, why don't the, do the girls read some cowboy stories, <laughs> etc.? So, you know, in every detail of life, you have to re... We had to rethink all of that. Were we going to stay together? And if we were staying together, it was going to transform our relationship. Mm. And eventually, there was no question we decided to do so. But after that, we couldn't live the old relationship. Mm. Not possibly. Mm. Not conceivably. Mm.